WTJR presents Friends of Wild Olive Branch Ministries with Kyle Kopp and David Vance, serving the Yeshua. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And now, today's message. Your words are nuclear, everybody. I'm Kyle Kopp here with David Vance, and we are friends of the Wild Olive Branch Ministries. Welcome, brother. <laughs> Just looking for the fallout. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that all of you out there in TV land are awake. <laughs> you know, brother, the last time we were together on the set, um, I was just preaching away. I and, noticed uh, that. Preaching away. And, uh, you know, we were talking about words and the power of words. And we were talking about the healing power of Jesus and, and how, how in that account of, of, of Jairus, how he set himself in agreement, let his words stay in agreement, how he didn't fall into fear, how he chose to believe the words of Jesus, how the woman with the issue of blood went forward. And, and, and she had said, you know, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And, and I'm just going on, and, and I'm excited, and, and again, tr trying to get it out to our listening audience that, that how powerful their words are. And I see your face contort, and I realize that I'm out of time. <laughs> and I look up, and there's 10 seconds left. And I think, okay, I've got to go so I apologize, everybody. I just want you to know that I was excited, and, and, and the Holy Ghost was on me, and I just want to take a few moments. We're going to pray. I'm going to share a few more thoughts and, and go on with what the Lord would have us to do yet today. Father in heaven, we thank you that you know our hearts through and through. And we thank you, Father God, that we can count on you and count on your Holy Spirit to lead and to guide and to direct us. And we thank you right now, Father God, that your very Holy Spirit resonates through the words that we speak and that the people of the listening audience of WTJR are blessed and edified and encouraged and we thank you that they have ears to hear what your spirit is saying to them father god we thank you for the united states of america we thank you for the for the leadership of this country pray as always lord that they would repent and turn from their evil ways and call upon the name of jesus father we thank you again for our our troops in the field and pray for their safety and thank you lord that you lead and bring them unto yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, we've, we've spent a great deal of time. You know, in the, we, we've passed, are, are we, are, was it, I can't remember now what Don had said, but um, we were getting close to 300 shows since we started in. Right. We're not quite there yet, but getting close. And, you know, brother, I, I, we would probably be shocked if we really knew in those 300 shows how many times we've talked about faith and action, how many times we've talked about the words of our mouth, how many times we've talked about getting the scripture in your heart and learning to react or act upon the scripture rather than react. And when, when those trials come, speaking, speaking right. the word, standing, standing on the truth of the word, talking about the power of agreement. Right. You know, we were talking, and I'll, I'll finish this quick summary and I'm going to do it in a very, very short way. What did Jesus say? I'm going to take you back to this one more time. We're in, the, we're, in, we're in Mark 5. We're on the 35th verse. While he was speaking, and that's talking about Jesus, he's speaking to the multitude. Some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken... He said to Jairus, it says here he said to the ruler, but he's talking about Jairus. He said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. David shared something when we were between tapings that I, I, I had recognized it, but it blessed me that he recognized it. And actually, I don't know that I willfully, I willfully thought it through in the midst of the trial, but it was good to know that what I thought I was doing, I was doing. Let me explain. Uh, we talked in, a while back about a, a tax audit. 
And, and what David blessed me with was, was that, you know, David and I, we communicate a lot. Uh, there isn't anything about my life that David doesn't know virtually. And, 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 and I had shared with him that I was having an audit. But he said to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that you hadn't seen me in fear and that my words had always confessed that, that we were not going to be penalized, that, that we were going to get what was due to us. That's right. That, that's my paraphrase. Right. And, 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 and that excites me, everybody, because I'm just like you. You know, I, I live in this flesh. I have to deal with those firing thoughts. I have to make choices, just like we've been encouraging all of you to make choices. And it, it edified me that, that, that I did this, you know, because I have to tell you, it wasn't that many years ago that I'm not so certain the results would have been the same because it's a work in progress. It takes time to learn. You know, a teacher, when they invest their time in a child, they, 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 those kids don't get it the first time. Okay, there has to be a tremendous amount of repetition that goes into that teaching for those kids. Now, some kids pick it up quick, but but the average child, there's going to be a, a, a amount of teaching and a amount of repetition for them to make that long term and get it into their into their minds. Well, we have to get Jesus words into our spirit and that takes time and it takes faith and it takes action. Right. And, and two, I, I, I just the Holy Spirit is just talking to me while you were talking about that. And, and you know, um, he said to say this, uh, we're all going to have trials. Yeah. I mean, they come. They do. It's part of life. Jesus said that to us. But, but the thing is, like in Kyle's case, this went on from April, May, June, July, and he just heard in mid-August, okay? So there's four and a half months basically. All right. So the longer the trial, the more uh, generally the more opportunity for you to mess up with your confession in your mouth. It's true. And, and, and so, you know, I just recognize when I would come into the office uh, for whatever purpose, you know, and I didn't ask anybody except when you and sure. and your secretary were there. <clears throat> but I would say, you know, any word? Nope. But we're going to win. You know, we're going to do it. You know, always the right confession. There was not a hint. You know, sometimes you, it's like a, a dogs, they say, can sense fear. Yeah. Okay. Well, so can humans. They can. So you can, uh, there, was, there wasn't once that I sensed any fear from him. Yeah, amen. So, saying that, it's not to praise him, it's to praise the Lord. That's exactly right. This is just a life lesson. It is. That you need to learn. Amen. Because the opportunity uh, for a long trial may come your way. But no matter how long you keep bridle on your mouth oh, and your tongue. Absolutely. And, and you will see the end. This trial, any trial that you're going through will end. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an ending. It does. Make sure your words are what the Word of God says about it and speak blessings to your enemies. That's right. You know, he, he and, wasn't... And I did that. I he, prayed for the yeah. auditor more than once. Absolutely. I did. So, I mean, that's what the Word commands us to do. Now... So, is it easy? No, no. It's not easy. But we didn't say it was easy. Hey, you talk about those rifling thoughts. I can say this now, okay, because it's not a matter of confession. But there was more than one time that I thought to myself, I don't care. You know, I, that's what I'm thinking now, okay? Right. I'm thinking to myself, I don't care. I just want to get this over with. I don't care about the money. Right. And I never spoke it because I knew that, right. that, that, that was, I, was, I was flying a flag of defeat. Right. So I just kept my words, and I just told that thought to flee because that's what the Word tells me Absolutely. I can do. To take captive. What you can do, you can take those thoughts captive. That's right. And, and speak the Word of God to them. They have to go. And, and, and it's encouraging because you're absolutely right. You know, I had those same rifles, you know, sure. those, those darts, if you want to say it that way. Right. And I'm just so grateful, so and, grateful. And your mind, if you all remember the old cassettes, 
<laughs> where you could rewind it. Yeah. Your mind rewinds and replays everything, see? It does. Uh, and that's the enemy trying to get you to, to oops, stumble with your words. Yeah. And don't. I mean, if you're, you're diligent to do that, you will be victorious. Amen. You know, I see it many times out in the world and, sure. and in believers and unbelievers, but I call it, my, my, my mindset picture is Eeyore. Oh, woe is me. And it's everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know, I, and, I, and I tell my employees all the time, gentlemen and ladies, let's keep a positive attitude. Let's, let's, let's not see the glass half empty. Let's see the glass half full. Let's try to figure out what's good about this situation, not what's bad, you know. And now that's a natural thought process. Right. I understand that. Right. And, uh, and and then and then I've told you know individually and more than one time I've said you know this is what the Word of God has to say. Right. And I've spoken the Word of God to them as a group. Right. You know right. because that makes that the Word is where is where is where the power lies. The, right. Not Kyle's word. Not oh boy. Not Kyle's word. <laughs> not David's word. It's. It's the, it's the scripture. It's the word of God. Those are the things you need to get in front of every situation. And yes, you, you know, I, I, when, when, the, when I opened that first letter that said, hey, buddy, we're going to audit you, I didn't jump up and do a cartwheel. I mean, at the first, it was, oh, but I said nothing. And I, and I said to myself, no, wait a minute. This doesn't have to be bad. You know, we're going to be okay. And you know the other refreshing part of it that I can tell all of you is, is because I knew I had nothing to hide. Amen. You know, you live honorably, you do the right thing, you provide the paperwork, you don't have to worry because you know that you've done the right thing. And that makes a big difference too. We find ourselves sometimes in really bad situations that we find hard to apply faith to because we know the part that we've played and we know we didn't do it right. So I want to suggest to you, those of you that are out there listening to us talking about your words and you're, you're defeated already because you know the part you played, repent. Ask God to forgive you. Ask Him for His mercy upon the situation. Right. He is faithful and just to forgive you. But you have to be willing to turn. You have to be willing that, number one, ask Him you know, for forgiveness and then say, okay, I'm going to repent. And repent means to turn, which means you go another direction from the direction you were going. You know, uh, here maybe last week, I was in an office that, uh, good Christian environment, so on and so forth, and I hadn't seen this guy for a number of months, and that was working there. And I said, well, how are you? Uh, his name was Tammy. And uh, he said, well, just surviving. There you go. And you know, when he said that word, it's like, it just, hmm. it was like a sword through me. Hmm. Because I thought, oh. He, he needs to get out of the survival mentality. Correct. Uh, and, and, I'm blessed and, and, and be blessed same. because the word is full of, full of that. If he's of, of, of the pop, prosperity oh, yeah. part, I mean, listen, uh, think of, of Lazarus and the rich man, you know. Some would say Lazarus, the rich man. Uh, the rich man and Lazarus, the poor man. Mm -hmm. The rich man went to hell. The poor man went to heaven. But that mentality <clears throat> that has uh, snuck into the church. It has. Is, and I say that because like this. He didn't go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Likewise, on the other hand, Lazarus didn't get into paradise or heaven, if you will, <clears throat> because he was poor. He got in there because he knew the Lord. That's right. So there's the difference. Don't, don't try to connect the dots that aren't there. That's correct. And everybody thinks because you're rich, you're going to hell. No way. No. There, uh, that, that doesn't have a thing to do with it. Nope. As long as you got it, like my brother said, honestly, through hard work, perseverance, proper money management, 
the Lord blessing you, you tithe, you're, you're sowing your seed. Amen. And, and, and first, and, and then watching it uh, provide dividends. It's laid out for you, folks. It, it, it's really, it's not all that hard. Abraham came from the land of Ur. Ur. He, he wasn't prosperous there, but because he knew God, right. God made him and wealthy. He did. Same way, and he was able to teach Isaac, right. Jacob, yep. <clears throat> all of those because in the same principles, Isaac went into, a matter of fact, the Lord wouldn't even let Isaac, it's in Genesis, first few chapters there, the Lord wouldn't even let Isaac leave the land that was drought. He had told, the Lord told him to sow in the land of drought. Yeah. And he became very extremely rich. Yeah. So because he was doing what, number one, he was obedient. Right, he's doing what the Lord and, told him and, to do. And, and, but he sowed, he was a giver, yeah. you know. And so, you know, those same principles apply. But because he's rich, doesn't mean he's going to hell. Because you're poor, don't mean you're going to heaven. That's right. The only way you're going to heaven is if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him into your heart. Amen, brother. Your, your wife can't get you there. Your nope. husband can't get you there. Your nope. children can't get you there. Only you. Yep. Only Jesus can get you there, but you have to ask him into your heart. Right. So, and the same way with the Holy Spirit. You ask him for the Holy Spirit, the, God says in Luke 11, 13, he'll give you the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So go for it. Amen. You know, I mean, it's the, it's the best gift. Jesus was leaving in order for the Holy Spirit to come. Yeah. Why? Because he was our teacher. Yeah. He's our, he's everything. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, I, I just can't fathom as a believer uh, not having the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I oh, I know. I just, it, it, I know. it's hard for me to comprehend. And, yeah, and it's, it's powerful. It's just powerful. And, and just beware, a lot of the ministries and churches are really trying to X the Holy Spirit out oh, yeah. uh, of everything. They are. Hey, listen, if it's in the Word, this is the truth. No matter what man's doctrine says, this is the truth. Amen. Read it for yourself. I agree. You know, and let the Holy Spirit show you. He'll yeah. show it to you. He will. He so. will. Well, you know, I want, I want to take another rabbit trail for just a minute. You, you were talking about prosperity and you were talking about seed sowing. But listen, everybody. We, we do a lot of things, and, and I'm going to take just a moment here, and uh, I'm going to talk about one thing, and then I'm going to lead it into another. I want to remind you, you know, we're, we're, we're here now in the middle of November, and the 30th of November is coming soon. And uh, we have, for a very long time, uh, WTJR, when I say we, WTJR here in Quincy has had several churches and folks for years that have brought shoeboxes that uh, myself and Big Bob Boris typically have loaded into a trailer and hauled to Del Rio, Texas to bless the children uh, that his Hearts and Hands ministry there in Del Rio has been blessing and raising up churches and orphanages and eye clinics and all the things they've done the last 20 years and are continuing to do. I shared with all of you earlier in the year that John Navarra, uh, the one that, that was led of the Lord to begin this ministry, had passed away and gone on to be with Jesus. His wife, Dorothy, who's walked by his side all these years, is continuing uh, to uh, lead the Hearts and Hands ministry. And uh, we actually, Bob and I, will be picking her up in Dallas on the way down, taking her with us to deliver the gifts, and then we will return her back to Dallas on our way home because she wants to be there and doesn't want to drive by herself. She lives in Dallas part of the time, lives in Del Rio part of the time, and she will be in Dallas at the time we're coming down. And I just want you guys to know that. Now, Oscar, the pastor of one of the biggest churches they've planted, has, has a brother in the Lord, an, a Mexican gentleman, who uh, is able to come back and forth across the border, uh, Nathan. And Nathan will be coming over and taking the gifts in, much like John used to. And, um, but we just want to continue that blessing, continue to be a blessing to those kids. Uh, and, we, and we believe that as those gifts go forward, that it facilitates change and, and, and investing that time and that energy and, and that talent will make a difference in their lives and, and, and help them to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And having said that, I want to take just a few minutes here at the end of the show today 
and I want to share a couple of testimonies of my own about investing in people. You know, I shared with a young man just recently who's a young farmer in another state. He's actually in Missouri, and I'd never met him before. And he was asking me, he said, why have you had success in your farming operation? And I looked at him, and I said, the, the biggest single key to success in a farming operation is, number one, to trust the Lord Jesus Christ with your life and with your business. I said, number two is to have good communication skills with all the people you work with, especially those whom you farm for, and to do your job with excellence. And he was just encouraged to hear that and listened and so on and so forth. And, and that was just a, a, a small bit of time that I spent with this young man. Never met him before in my life. Now, I've got two gentlemen that they're not there yet. As of today's taping, they're not there yet. But there's a gentleman that's worked for me 18 years seasonally. And during this time, he's had a business, failed at the business. In the meantime, the failure of the business he's always facilitated was really on the backs of his, his stepfather and his mother. Very bitter, very unforgiving, not wanting to... I, I, I've been preaching at him every year, every time I've been with him privately. You know, you need to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And he's always telling me, I'll get around to that. And, and, and then I, I've also been telling him that the unforgiveness that he holds is doing nothing but eating his lunch and that he needs to let that go, that he needs to ask his mother for forgiveness and, and tell her he's forgiven her. And, and he just, no, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Now listen, this has been going on 10 or 12 years now, okay? And I keep saying the same things over and over and over and over. Well, I can tell you that in the spring of 2015 that he made a phone call to his mother and chose to start talking to her, and he's going to go visit her in Corpus Christi in March. And the reason I'm sharing that with you, you know, now I haven't shared with you that he's received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior because he's still holding me at arm's length. But I'm telling you, it's coming. He's going to church every Sunday now with his wife, and he's got me preaching in his ear. He's going to surrender to the Lord. It's right. coming. It, right. it hasn't happened. But it's coming, and it won't be too late. It's coming, okay? That's my confession. However, however, you know, there, I could have quit talking to him these 12 some years and, and just quit preaching to him when I had the opportunity. But he generally would always lead me to the conversation, and I would just keep knocking the door down. And it thrills my heart that he's paying attention and that he's taken this step and that he's reached out and that he's choosing to forgive because God, even though he's not saved yet, God knows his heart and he will meet him there. He recognizes this. He sees the time that's been invested and I'm believing that God will do what only he can in his life. But I'm grateful that the Lord used me as an instrument and I'm grateful that I've got to see him make a change. Well, there's another young man that's involved. When I say young men, these guys are all 40-somethings, okay? But, but, but he was raised in a Christian home, very godly mother. The, 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 this, this, these young men's mother loves the Lord to the point of being kooky. She loves the Lord. And, and kooky's okay because sometimes kooky just means that she's just investing everything she has in the Lord. And I think all of us could use a little of that. Matter of fact, we could use a lot of it. But in the meantime... Two of the boys in this family are ministers. This brother has been, for lack of a better way of saying it, pretty much a hellion, everybody. Just living his own life, trying to do the right thing, trying to be a good dad, trying to be a good provider, and, and he is. He's doing those things well. But, but, but the God side of it just keeps pushing it aside, and he's had a tremendous amount of ought towards one of the brothers that's a minister. They grew up together. They've always had very contradicting personalities. And, but recently, just very recently, there was a situation that involved me that, 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 cause both of these brothers work for me at times, kind of a strange situation. And, and I come upon a situation where the minister brother really hadn't been taking care of business like he should for me. And it also involved the other brother because he was supposed to be the one doing the spraying. But this, the brother that was supposed to be doing the spraying that's always kind of had this ought with his other brother reached out to his other brother and said, listen, I'm taking the bullet for this one. You know, Kyle's disappointed. Uh, this really isn't your fault. This is my fault. You don't worry about this. I'm going to take care of it. And, 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 and the minister brother came to me and said, I don't know what you're doing, 
but he said, I showed the text to my wife and went, who is this guy? Why is he texting me? Why is he calling me? This has never happened before, okay? And, 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 and he looked right at me and he said, you are, in, you, are, you, you are instituting change in my brother. And I looked at him and said, no, we know who's instituting change. I'm just being faithful right. to keep preaching the word That's and right. keep reaching out to him. I chose <coughs> when this young man started helping me that I was just going to love him with the love of the Lord. Right. And I was just going to reach out and minister and be a friend to him. I don't spend my life trying to correct him, but he's coming to me for advice. He wants to know my perspective, and, and I share my perspective. Let me well, Something on the inside, working on the outside, oh, what a change in my life. Well, basically what that is, and what we're all supposed to do, is be witnesses. Amen. You know, witnesses, you know, the church has got a confusion explanation in my mind of what a witness is. Hmm. A witness is not, I mean you can be an evangelist, but they th typically think every witness is evangelist. You're not going out, a witness is not an evangelist, a witness is just representing the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. in your life. Amen. All the time. Amen. And, and if you're there, if you see a, for example, if you see a wreck in the highway, you know, and you see that, and the, the police take your report, mm -hmm. you're a witness. That's right. And so you just report back what you see. Correct. So that's what, basically what Kyle's been doing for these young men. And, 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 but see, they're drawn to him. They the are. Lord's drawn him. the Holy him. Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is drawn both those men so that Kyle can be a witness so that they can get saved. It's basically that. And you have people in your life Amen. that you can be a witness to. That's right. Be a witness. Mark uh, 16, 15 says, be a witness. Yeah. You know, go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Acts 16, 8, 9, and 10. Talk about going for the nations. That's right. Be, go do for the nations if you want. Amen. You know, but be a witness somewhere. That's right. Live your life honorably before the Lord. Right. Ask the Lord's entrance into everything that you do. Be vocal. Don't be afraid. When people are asking questions, answer the questions. Exactly. You know, and they will ask. They, you are a living epistle. As right. a believer, there are many of you out there in TV land that are believers, and you live your lives honorably before the Lord. Trust me, people are paying attention. You better believe that. You know, if I started spending my days in the bar in Farmer City, Farmer City would fall over because they know that's not who I am. That's right. They would say something's grievously wrong. Well, I want to say to all of you, you have an opportunity to witness to somebody by your actions, by your life, and by your words. And take those opportunities. Don't be afraid. Listen, it's a dying world. They need Jesus. We need to serve him. Be blessed, everybody. Good day. This week on WTJR Community Calendar. There'll be a blood drive on Thursday, November 19th at 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the American Red Cross, 3000 North 23rd Street in Quincy, Illinois. To set up an appointment, call 1-800-733-2767. Also, there'll be a blood drive on Thursday, November 19th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the First Baptist Church, 363 North Washington Street in Cahoka, Missouri. Also, from 12.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. at the Fort Madison United Methodist Church, 510 9th Street in Fort Madison, Iowa. To set up an appointment, call 1-800-733-2767. And 2015 Mexico Shoebox Ministry in memory of Roger Ham. The drop off by Monday, November the 30th at 222 North 6th Street here in Quincy, Illinois. 
For more information or a list of items to put in the shoebox, call WTJR at 217-228-1616. Ma'am, I won't hurt the boy. Ah!